Morning everybody, thanks for watching. So I'm going to do a few short videos and articles on my Substack, um, which I will, if you're watching on YouTube, I'll link, um, or put the link in the description box. But I'm going to do these articles and videos on evil and the fact that God is responsible for his entire creation. And this includes evil. And one of the reasons why people cannot accept that God is God, and when I say that I mean that they cannot accept that he is sovereign over all of his creation, is because they cannot justify the evil in this world and they say that that must come separate from God. But if God didn't place evil exactly where it should be then God is not truly sovereign and he's not truly God if there's a creation in this world that he has to react to then what that does is it takes him off his throne and what religion does is exactly that by separating God's responsibility for evil what they do is actually take God off his throne. And now God has to react to something, a foreign element that he did not create. And therefore, he cannot truly be God if he has to react to an evil that he did not create. And, you know, I'm not going to pretend to be someone who understands the depths of evil and why there has to be such atrocities in this world because I can't explain all that but based on scripture proof is given that God's ways are higher than our ways and that evil is one of those things that we can't fully understand but we can fully understand that it has its place and that God is using it and God is sovereign over it and will use it to produce something better than what would have produced if evil was never there in the first place. So evil is not something that's separate that God has to react to, but evil is something that God created that he uses, even though we may not understand it and even though it's horrific, and we see the horrific results of evil in this world, it is used by God to create a good that we may not understand now, but that God uses to give us a greater joy and give humanity and all of his creation a greater understanding of who God is by experiencing this evil than we would have had if we didn't experience it. And that's actually said in Ecclesiastes 1.13, where it is an experience of evil Elohim has given to the sons of humanity to humble them by it. So this life we live, according to Ecclesiastes 1.13, is an experience of evil. And we know Romans chapter 1 talks about they changed the glory, this is Romans chapter 1 verse 23, they changed the glory of the incorruptible God into the likeness of the image of a corruptible human being. So that's what we as humans do a lot to God. I know I've done it in the past, is that I relate God to being a human being. Like if a human being did this, then that would be horrible. And I judge God based on how I would judge a human being well Paul says not to do this in Romans chapter 1 and that kind of goes back to Isaiah chapter 55 I know most of us have heard this verse before 8 and 9 for my designs talking about God are not your designs and your ways are not my ways averring is Yahweh for as the heavens are loftier than the earth so are my ways loftier than your ways and my designs than your designs. So whatever you believe heaven and earth to be, the analogy here is that heaven is so far much higher, so much higher than earth. That's the gulf 
It's, ex it's explaining a huge gulf between God's designs and his ways and our designs and our ways. And then going back to Romans chapter 1, how can we relate anything to God as we relate it to a human? Because God is so much higher than the human. So why wouldn't evil fit into this category? Yeah, we can't understand why evil is so horrendous and so despicable how human can be, beings can do certain things to other human beings. I mean, it's atrocious. Just look around the world. But how can we not take that evil and apply it to Isaiah 55 and Romans chapter 1 that God's ways are so much higher than our ways and his designs so much higher than our designs. The gulf is the same between the heavens and the earth. That's how much loftier God's ways are. And I know that we, as we see he evil being done by humans, we look at that evil and we apply it to God because we can only relate to human beings. But the truth is God's ways are so much higher than our ways. So why doesn't evil fit into that? That God is doing something with evil far and beyond what we can comprehend and understand. Even though we see the ravages of it in our earth. And most of us have experienced to different degrees as much evil as they can handle. But if we understand that God's ways are higher than our ways, we can rest that we might not know exactly the end result of what this evil is. But we can look at scripture that shows that God is in control of it. He created it and he's using it for a greater purpose that's higher and loftier than our design and our understanding. Because that's what God is. So we can't look at evil and apply it as if we apply it to a human being. You have to understand that even though God created evil, it's not like a human being doing evil. Because God is using it for a greater and grand purpose. So Ecclesiastes 1.13 says this is an experience of evil that God has given to humanity. Isaiah 45 7 actually says in the first person I'm gonna go there here Isaiah 45 7 former of light and creator of darkness maker of good and creator of evil I Yahweh make all these things so here we have God in the first person saying that he is the creator of evil and this word in Isaiah 45 7 evil is the Hebrew word Ra which is the same word that is used to describe the people of the flood in Noah's day. They were so evil, they were Ra, that they had to be wiped off the face of the earth. And it's the same word evil used in Genesis to describe the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So the Ra, the evil in that tree, is the evil that we know, that we talk about in Noah's day how wicked and evil those people were so it's not some calamity or something like that it can't be explained away it's the same word described in all of these instances of evil and here in Isaiah 45 7 it says God is the creator of that evil creator of evil so People want to deny, many religious people deny the fact that, that God is the creator of evil because they want to get him off the hook because they think that if God created evil, then he must be evil. And we can't say that God is evil because we all know that God is good. But that is that very explanation is going against Romans chapter 1, which is making God just like an... In a corruptible human being the incorruptible God and we're looking at him as a corruptible human being because if a human being did evil then that human being is evil but if God does evil then he must be evil no God's ways are higher than our ways because God does evil creates it 
it's not the same as a human being because God eventually works it out for good. So by trying to get God off the hook from evil, what we do is actually say that whoever created evil, Satan or some other entity, has now created something that has invaded God's creation and God now has to react to it and now God can't accomplish what he wants to accomplish because of this evil and now you make a dual God. So whoever created evil is on the same level as God and they're fighting against each other in this eternal battle where God will win some of his creation and Satan will take most of his creation to some eternal hell hole or take them away from God so that God won't be able to complete the all in all. So Satan is just as powerful as God if he takes most or part of God's creation away from him and that creation God wants to have that creation with him then that puts Satan on the same level as God. And now you have taken God off of his throne because you don't understand that evil doesn't apply to God like it does to human beings. A couple examples, as I mentioned before, Acts chapter 4, verse 27 and 28. Read these verses carefully. I'm going to go there. So this is Acts chapter 4, 27 to 28. I know if, um, you've heard me read these before if you ever watched any of my videos. But this just exemplifies the way God operates. Verse 27, For of a truth in this city were gathered against thy holy boy Jesus, whom thou dost anoint, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, together with the nations and the people of Israel, to do whatever thy hand and thy counsel designates beforehand to occur. That's God. Thy hand and thy counsel designates beforehand to occur. So God planned for this to occur. For what to occur? For Jesus Christ to be killed. So the Israelites, the Gentiles, Herod and Pilate and Judas, all these people committed evil acts in order to kill Jesus. But it was God's counsel. God decided beforehand for this to happen. So this evil that these people committed was necessary in order for Jesus to go to the cross. So was Jesus going to the cross God's plan? Or was it Herod and Pilate's and Judas's and all their plans? Ultimately, it was God's plan. Why? Because Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ's death for sin, his entombment, and his resurrection on that cross would eventually save all mankind and all creation. The cross demonstrates just how much God loves his creation by having his own son go through this torture and this death and this experience in order to save unqualified, unworthy creatures. And God couldn't have shown this love without the sin in the world and without the things, the evil acts that Herod, Pilate, Judas, the Jews and the Gentiles did. So even though they all did evil, the ultimate result was the salvation of all mankind through Jesus Christ going to the cross. So the evil that those men did and those people did was still evil for them, but God created it and used it to bring Jesus to the cross. If they never committed those evils, Jesus never would have gone to the cross. Revelations 13.5 or 13.8 says that the Lamb of God was slain from the foundation of the world. So it God had planned for Jesus to take care of sin before sin ever even entered the world. So in order to demonstrate his love, in order to have Christ come and save humanity, evil had to be there. The cross wasn't an afterthought of God. It was God. It was the thought of God. And God created evil, and the people that did it were evil. It was an evil act. 
and they will be judged for it. But it's not evil when we apply it to God because it worked to bring about a good purpose. So even though human beings are evil, when they exact God's plan, God is not because he works it out for good. And that's the difference between God's ways and our ways. When we see evil in this world, we can't always understand how it's going to produce good. We're not meant to. We're just meant to trust that God will produce good because he is good. Otherwise, this evil... If it comes from Satan or other human beings, we could credit Satan with our salvation because if Satan caused all these people to do evil or we attribute this evil to these people that brought Christ to the cross, well, we can say that that saved us. If evil wasn't ultimately a plan of God, then we could credit these people with our salvation, but we can't because they were evil, but God used it, created it in order to bring about this good. And God had planned this from the disruption of the world before any of these people were born. So God planned the cross to occur. He planned sin before Adam and Eve were even born. It's not an afterthought. It's part of the creative process in bringing all creation to God. Genesis 50:20 the same thing the story of Joseph remember the story of Joseph when his brothers were jealous of him and they planned to kill him and then they ended up throwing him in a pit and then eventually sold him to slavery and then Joseph became powerful in Egypt and eventually rose to power enough that he saved all of Israel from starvation And so what his brothers did was an evil act. But look at what Joseph said about that. To his brothers, you devised, this is, the story is in Genesis, end of Genesis, but this verse, Genesis 50, 20, Joseph speaking to his brothers, you devised evil against me, yet Elohim, he devised it for good in order to accomplish, as at this day, to preserve many people alive. So what Joseph's brothers did was evil, but God planned that evil. Why? In order to get Joseph to where he needed to be, because if he wasn't sold into slavery and eventually went to Egypt and became powerful there, he never would have saved all of Israel. But God planned all this evil to occur in order to bring about the salvation of Israel, to save Israel because of the evil. The very same brothers that did this evil were saved by the own evil they did because that evil brought Joseph to power in Egypt and only because of that was Joseph able to save his brothers from starvation because of his position in Egypt. Now, was it evil of Joseph's brothers? Yes, it was. But ultimately, it's God's plan in order for Joseph to get to where he needed to be to save all of Israel. So God's ways are not our ways. What we do as evil, God uses to bring about good. Does that mean, and Paul says this, oh, should we just go off and do evil? Of course not. Because we cannot make evil into good. We cannot change evil into good. Only God can. So going out with this mentality that, excuse me, going out with this mentality that we should do evil is not understanding that God is well above us. We still try to do good. We do the best we can, but God will take all evil, all sin, and he'll turn it into good one day. We can't do that, so we shouldn't try to do evil. We try to do good. But God is higher than us. He is not a corruptible human being. He is not, his ways are much higher than our ways. As Isaiah 55 says, as the heavens is higher than the earth, so only he can turn all evil into good. So God 
again, um, you know, I'm going to cut it short here. Um, I'm going to do a, a couple more videos. There's more I wanted to say on this, um, but I wanted to keep this around 20 minutes. Actually, I wanted to do it in 10 minutes, but um, that's not really possible. So I'll end it here. Um, I'm going to go over some more scripture that absolutely proves that God is in charge of evil and he uses it as part of his sovereignty to create something better and something good to accomplish his will based on the intermediate of evil. The, the evil is a means to the end. It's, it's not the end. And if the end is good, then that means is justified. And that's exactly what God does. And I'll go over that a little more in my next video. Thanks for watching.